Hey, what's up guys? So I'm gonna be walking you through some visualizations that I've generated for analyzing flops. So I've defined a few functions here. This one just outputs the overall magnitude or height of a flop by taking each card into account, treating it like a, uh, an axis, and then just taking the magnitude of that by applying a numerical value to each card. The suitedness outputs a value from one to three, and the paredness is also on a scale of one to three. Then we count the number of made straights on the flop um, from zero to three, and that's reflected in the altered version of a GTO plus exported spreadsheet. Then what we do is we have looked at the different height categorizations of the flops. And we can just take a very basic look at the average equity for each category. On the very low end, which is most favorable to the big blind, we have a triple medium board and the most favorable board for the under the gun razor is going to be an ace high high board. Here, we've taken the magnitude of a flop and the betting frequency of a flop. We've then combined our calculations from for the amount of made straights and the suitedness of a flop to develop a score for wetness that's on a scale of zero to three. So this is generally for the purpose of seeing what deviation from the overall trend linear regression line can be explained by wetness if it can't be explained by magnitude. So if we look at boards with a magnitude of 16, you have jack, nine, seven, makes sense because 16 is sort of on the, in the middle, a seven, three, queen, eight, six, and the blue boards, which are on the very low end of wetness and the purple boards, cluster a little bit closer to the regression line. The boards that are really far away from the regression line seem to be King Jack 10 single suit, which is extremely wet, and then 10, 9, 8. But I think a two-dimensional visualization like this just didn't tell the full story. So what I went ahead and did, I created a three-dimensional visualization of magnitude, wetness, and betting frequency um, to get a feel for how these deviations uh, can be explained. Very wet boards seem to lag behind the linearity of the magnitude and the betting frequency. The dry boards, blue and purple mainly, doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of difference in terms of how we would play these boards. For the boards that generally don't seem to have too many straight possibilities and are two-tone, um, we would play those more or less the same way as their drier composites. So the next thing I did was I applied a k-means clustering algorithm to all these flops, uh, taking into account the magnitude and the wetness and then normalizing that so all the values were on one scale. I colored them according to their category from the algorithm and what a k-means clustering algorithm just does is it tries to cluster different elements into categories based on the features you feed it. So in this case, I fed it wetness, magnitude, and bedding frequency, and it came up with these different groups. Um, so our yellow boards are boards that we can generally, if you want it to be very simplifying, we could say, okay, let's just check all of our yellow boards, anything from six, three, deuce, to seven, six, four. We could just check those all the time because those are really beneficial for the big blind. And then 
the boards right here that are in blue and the boards that are in orange, I think those are gonna be the boards that are gonna warrant the most studying. Boards like these ones in purple, these are very obvious range bets. And even on the lower end, like Ace-9-8, uh, two-tone, we're betting that 80% of the time. And again, if you wanted to truly just simplify your strategy, and if you're playing low stakes or micro stakes, I think it certainly is reasonable and not uh, a crazy oversimplification to be range betting all these boards that fall into the purple category. So if we can, at the very beginning, say that we range check all of these boards that would fall into the yellow category, which are low on magnitude, uh, very high on wetness, not boards we would want to see that very often, then it would make sense that the bulk of our studying should really be these boards that fall into the medium end of betting frequency and have various levels of wetness and, and magnitude that really cluster towards the center and something like 10, 9, 6, 2 tone or king, 4, 3. These boards are not immediately obvious as to whether they're extremely beneficial for the preflop raiser or the, or the big blind. In fact, these are boards where things are somewhat equalized and you need a stronger understanding of theory to build a strategy. So we are going to be in future videos as we study this spot, we're going to start out with looking at all the boards that fall into this purple category. And we can see that there are still some very wet boards that fall into this purple category. We're basically just going to be studying flops in order of categories and trying to build general strategies for each of these categories. And then we can build upon that as we go along. Thanks for watching guys. Have a good day.